okay thank you uh, you can see my screen now okay. although widely published and read by itself bhagavad gita originally appeared an episode in the mahabharat the epic sanskrit history of ancient world the mahabharat tells the event leading to up to the present age of kali it was at the beginning of this age some 50 centuries ago that lord krishna spoke bhagavad gita to his friend and devotee arjuna their discourse one of the greatest philosophical and religious dialogue known to man took place just before onset of war a great practical conflict between hundred son of the trast and on opposing side their cousin the pandavas or the son of pandu the trast and pandavas were brothers born in kuru dynasty descending from king bharat a former ruler of earth from whom the name mahabharat derives because the trast the elder brother was born blind the throne that otherwise would have been his was passed down to younger brother Pandu. When Pandu died at an early age, his five children, Yudhishthir, Bhima, Arjuna, Nakul and Shahadev, came under the care of Dhritarashtra, who in effect became, for the time being, the king. Thus the son of Dhritarashtra and those of Pandu grew up in the same royal household. Both were trained in the military arts by the expert Drona, and counseled by reward grandfather of clan Bhisma. Yet the son of Dhritarashtra, especially the eldest Duryodhan, hated and envied uh, the Pandavas, and the blind and the weak-minded Dhritarashtra wanted his two sons, not those of Pandus, to his own sons, not those of Pandu, to inherit the kingdom. Thus Dhritarashtra, with Duryodhana, with Dhritarashtra's consent, plotted to kill the young sons of Pandu, and it was only by the careful protection of their uncle Vidura and their cousin Lord Krishna that the Pandavas escaped that many attempts against their lives. Now, Lord Krishna was not an ordinary man, but the Supreme Personality God of Godhead himself. He had descended to earth and was playing the role of a prince in a contemporary dynasty. In this role, he was also nephew of Pandu's wife Kunti or Pratha, the mother of Pandavas. So, both as a relative and as the eternal upholder of religion, Krishnama favored the righteous son of Pandu and protected them. Ultimately, however, the clever Duryodhana challenged the Pandavas to a gambling match and in course of that fateful tournament, Duryodhana and his brother took possession of Draupadi, the chaste and devoted wife of Pandavas, and insultingly tried to strip her naked before the entire assembly of prince and the kings. Krishna's divine intervention saved her, but the gambling which was rigged cheated the Pandavas of their kingdom and forced them into the 13th year of exile. Upon returning from exile, the Pandavas rightfully requested their kingdom from Duryodhan, who bluntly refused to yield it. Duty bound as prince to serve in public administration, the Pandavas reduced their request to a mere five villages. But Duryodhana arrogantly replied that he would not spare them enough land into which to drive a pin. Throughout all this, the Pandavas had been consistently tolerant and forbearing, but now war was seemed inevitable. Okay, who wants to read next from here? Nonetheless, somebody has raised the hand. So, my Krishna. Who wants to read next, as I said? We need one person born now. If you don't engage, you won't get any benefit out of the class. Let me make it very clear. So you have to read, you have to keep camera on. I'm repeating again, otherwise no benefit because then you will not pay attention to this, okay? Nagrani Mataji, you want to read? Yes, Prabhuji. Yes, please go ahead and read, Mataji. Nonetheless, as the princes of the world divided, some fighting with the sons of Dhritarashtra, others with the Pandavas, Krishna himself took the role of messenger for the sons of pa Pandu and went to and went to the court of Dhritarashtra to plead for peace. When 
His pleas were refused. War was now certain. The Pandavas, men of the highest moral st stature, recognized Krishna to be the supreme personality of Godhead, whereas the impious sons of Dhritarashtra did not. Yet Krishna offered to enter the war according to the desire of the antagonists. As God, he would not personally fight, but whoever so desired might avail himself of Krishna's army, and the other side could have Krishna himself as an advisor and helper. Duryodhana, the political genius, snatched at Krishna's armed forces, while the Pandavas were equally eager to have Krishna himself. In, the, in this way, Krishna became the charioteer of Arjuna, taking it upon himself to drive the fabled Bauman's chariot. This brings us to the point at which Bhagavad Gita begins. With the two armed arrayed, ready for combat, and Dhritarashtra anxiously inquiring of his secret, uh, secretary Sanjaya, what did they do? The scene, the scene is set with only the need for a brief note regarding the translation and commentary. The general pattern translators have followed in regard in rendering Bhagavad Gita into English has been to push aside the person Krishna to make room for their own concepts and philosophies. The history of Mahabharata is taken as point my mythology and Krishna become a poetic device for presenting the ideas of some anonymous genius. Not at the best, he becomes a minor historical personage. But the person Krishna is both the goal and the substance of Bhagavad Gita, so far as the Gita speaks of itself. This translation then and the commentary that accompanies it to, to pr propose to direct the reader to Krishna rather than away from him. The Bhagavad Gita thus becomes wholly consistent and comprehensible. Since Krishna is the speaker of the Gita and it is ultimate goal as well, Bhagavad Gita as it is presents this great scripture in its true terms. Shall Thank I continue? You, Thank you, Mataji. No, thank you. Someone else should read. Are so it? everybody understood what we did, what we read. Do you have any question, any any doubt so far? Or should we go to the next? Because it, it was a history, so it's clear. There is no philosophy, so I'm not going to say anything. All of you are familiar with history. Uh, I believe so. I'll go to the next section. Preface. Who wants to read this? This is two pages. We'll read it and then we'll start with chapter one. The reason we are reading preface just to tell you that it will it will help you to know what it, what you're heading to. So any any book you should definitely read preface. Okay, that's the rule. Uh, book reading. Okay, who wants to read that section, preface? Hare Krishna. Hare New people, Krishna. I'm going to call the name after this if somebody doesn't say. Hethan Mataji, you can read now. And the next okay. person should be ready. You announce your name and I'll ask you, I'll ask you to come. Okay. Uh, next time we'll read. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Hare Krishna. Uh, originally, I I've, I've, I wrote Bhagavad Gita as it is in the form in which it is presented now. When this book when this book was first published, the original manu, uh, manus, manuscript was unfortunately cut, cut short to less than 400 pages without illustrations and without explanation for most of the original verses of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. In all, all of my books, Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Sri Isopanisad, etc. This, the system is that I gave the original purport. This makes original verse its English translation Translation, word for word for word, Sanskrit English equivalent transla translation and purpose. This makes the book very authentic and scholarly and makes the meaning self-evident. 
I was not very happy. Therefore, when I had minimized, I um, mean, I had to minimize my original manual manuscript. But later on, when the demand for the Bhagavad Gita as it is, the demand for the Bhagavad Gita as it is considerably increased, I was requested to make to by my scholars and devotees to present the book in its original form. Thus, the present attempt is to offer the original manuscript of this great book of knowledge with full parampara ex explanation in order to establish the Krishna conscious mov movement more soundly and progressively. Our Krishna consciousness mo movement is genuine, historical, authenticated, na uh, authorized, natural, and transcendental. Due to its base, uh, be uh, due to its being based on Bhagavad Gita as it is, it is gradually becoming the most popular movement in the entire world, especially amongst the young generation. The, it is because more and more increased increase to the old, older generation also. The older gentlemen are becoming interested so much so that the father, the grand um, and the grandfather of of my disciples are encouraging us by, by being life member of our great society, the International Society of Krishna Consciousness. In Los Angeles, many fathers and mothers used to come to see me to express their feelings and of gratitude for my leading, uh, leading the Krishna consciousness movement throughout the entire world. Some of them said that it is greatly fortunate for the Americans and that I have started the Krishna conscious movement in America. But actually the original father of this moment of the Lord Krishna himself is of this moment is Lord Krishna himself. Since it has started a long time ago but it comes it is coming down to human society by dis disciplic succession. If I have any credit in this co connection it, di it did not belong to me personally. But it is due to my eternal spiritual master, his divine grace, Om Vishnupada, Parampara, uh, Paramp Paramhans, Pariraj Kakarya, 108 Srimad Bhagavad, Srimad Bhakti Siddha, Siddhanta, Shri uh, Saraswati Goswami Maharaj, Prabhupada. If personally I have any credit in this matter, it is only that I have tried to present Bhagavad Gita as it is without any adulteration. Before my presentation of Bhagavad Gita as it is, almost all the English edition of Bhagavad Gita were introduced to fulfill someone's personal ambition. But our attempt in presentation or uh, presenting Bhagavad Gita as it is, is to present the mission of Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. Our business is to present the will, the will of Krishna, not, not that any mundane speculator like the political politician, philosopher or scientist. For they have very little knowledge of Krishna, despite despite all their others, no, other knowledge. When Krishna said, "Man mana bhava mad bhakto mad bhakto bhad mad yuk, uh, yad, yaji mad namaskar namaskuru etc." Be unlike the so-called scholars do not say that Krishna and his in, inner spirit are different. Krishna is absolute and there is no difference between Krishna name and Krishna form. Krishna qualities, Krishna past, uh, past, past etc. 
This absolute position of Krishna is different, difficult to understand for any person who is not devotee of Krishna. The system of para uh, parampara discipline succession. Generally, so the so-called scholars, politicians, philosophers, and swamis without perfect knowledge of Krishna try to banish and try and kill Krishna when writing commentary on Bhagavad Gita. So, such unauthorized commentary upon Bhagavad Gita is known as Maya Vada Bhasya. And Lord Ch Chaitanya has warned us about this unauthorized men. Lord Chaitanya clearly said that anyone who tried to understand Bhagavad Gita from Maya Vadi po point of view comment comment a, a great blunder commit a great blunder the result of such blunder will be that misguide that the misguides misguided students of bhagavad gita will certainly be be wilded on the path of spiritual guidance and will not be able to go back home go back god uh, back to godhead i'll read okay. further um someone else okay. should read mataji okay hari okay. krishna uh, hari krishna someone was ready to read so yeah yes uh -huh. yeah uh, uh can you please start highlighting like it will be helpful for you and others so Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, our only purpose is to present the Bhagavad Gita as it is in order to guide the conditioned student to the same purpose for which Krishna descended to this planet once in a day of Brahma or every 8 billion, 8 trillion, 600 billion years. This purpose is stated in Bhagavad Gita and we have and we have to accept it as it is otherwise there is no point in trying to understand the bhagavad gita so uh, otherwise the, yes I cannot hear you. Or you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh. Yeah. There is no point in trying to understand the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. Even your voice is interrupted. Voice is not coming. So, <coughs> can you read again? If you read it. I'm here, Lord Krishna, first he spoke. Ramachandra, can uh, you read again from there? Sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry. I think I have some bad internet connection. Oh, yeah, okay, sorry. Uh, so, Lord Krishna first spoke Bhagavad Gita to the sun god some hundred years ago hundreds of millions of years ago. We have to accept this fact and thus understand the historical significance of Bhagavad Gita without in misinterpretation. On the authority of Krishna to interpret the Bhagavad Gita without any reference to the will of Krishna is the greatest offense. In order to save oneself from this offense, one has to understand the Lord has the supreme personality of Godhead. As he was directly understood by the Arjuna, Lord Krishna, first disciple. Such understanding of Bhagavad Gita is really profitable and authorized for the welfare of human society in fulfilling the mission of life. Krishna consciousness movement is essential in human society for it offering the highest perfection of life. How this is so explained fully in Bhagavad Gita. Unfortunately, Indian wranglers have 
taken advantage of Bhagavad Gita to push forward their demonic propens propensities and mislead people regarding right understanding of simple principles of life. Everyone should know how God or Krishna is great and everyone should know the factual position of living entities. Everyone should know that a living entity is eternal, a servant, and unless one, one, one serves Krishna as to serve illusion in different varieties of three modes of material nature and thus wander perpetually within the cycle of birth and death. Even the so-called liberated Maya Vadi speculator has to undergo this process. This knowledge constitutes a great science and each and every living being has to hear it for his own interest. People in general, especially in, the, in this age of Kali, are enormed by an external energy of Krishna and they are wrongly think that by the advancement of materials comforts, every man will be happy. They have no knowledge that the material or the external nature is very strong. For everyone is too strongly bound by the stringent laws of material nature. A living entity is happily the part of the parcel of Lord, and thus is the natural function is to render immediate service of to the Lord. By the spell of illusion, one tries to be the happy by serving his personal sense gratification in different forms which will never make him happy. Instead of satisfying his own personal material senses, he has to satisfy the sense of the Lord. That is the highest perfection of life. The Lord wants this and he demands it. One has to understand the central point of Bhagavad Gita. Our Krishna consciousness movement is teaching the whole world the central point. And because we are not polluting the theme of Bhagavad Gita as it is, anyone seriously interested in deriving the paths by deriving benefits by studying the Bhagavad Gita must take help from Krishna consciousness movement. For practical understanding of Bhagavad Gita under the direct guidance of Lord Krishna. We hope theref uh, therefore the people will derive the greatest benefits by studying the Bhagavad Gita as it is. It is as it is, uh, as we have presented it here. And even if one man become a pure devotee of Lord, we shall consider our attempt a success. Thank you, bro. Thank you so much. A.C. Yeah. Bhaktivedan Swami, 12th May 1971, yeah. Sydney, Australia. Oh. No, just... Uh, so, uh, I know there is a lot we read right now. And there is a lot to ask and discuss, but don't worry. If you have questions, as we go into chapters, we will come across these terminology, terminologies like mode of material nature, you know, so many new terms, parampara system, cycle of birth and death, and, and day of Brahma and all that. We will discuss in detail. It, the Krishna has given everything in detail in subsequent chapters, okay? So even if you don't understand, what you need to understand that two, three things that one question may come in your mind. I'll take five minutes and then go to chapter one. That why this book, Bhagavad Gita as it is, right? So Prabhupada explaining that there are almost, I think, six, seven hundred editions so far of Bhagavad Gita translations. So why this is unique? So Prabhupada explaining because this is presented as it is. Why? Because it is presented the way Krishna wanted it. The Krishna is central figure, so it present this book present Krishna as a central figure. Second, it it is talking about historical significance of this great knowledge book. So it came, it was spoken five thousand years ago in the battlefield of Kurukshetra. You already read the history we just read, um, and this book is is not a religious book. It is an educational book. Prabhupada explained later that anybody can read it. That's why you see everywhere in the world people are reading from all the religion. The Bhagavad Gita had been translated in hundreds of languages, including, you know, uh, Persian, Urdu, like different religions, languages also people are reading the book, Bhagavad Gita. So it is pretty wide because it's the knowledge about 
soul and super soul and paramatma like god and it's very practical and scientific it's not something just you know sentiment so that is why this knowledge book is very important and then propad explaining that why why this particular translation how did he come about this book all that so you already read i'm not going to go in detail uh i will move on to chapter 1 um uh, and let me go to the chapter 1 we'll start with shloka 1 okay and if you want to read more about this background about bhagavad gita then in the book if you have a book there is called section called introduction and introduction is 30 40 pages if you have time you should definitely i would recommend read the introduction okay yourself if you read the introduction you will get a gist of what bhagavad gita as it is is like detail okay so for the sake of time i'm not going into that but i would recommend you should definitely read it in your free time uh you have 3 4 days upcoming so you can read during that time all right before saturday basically right so let's go to chapter 1 okay so the way we do that uh let me make it uh, advanced view so that have uh, continuous and uh, i'm going to say the screen who wants to read starting <clears throat> chapter 1 observing the armies on the battlefield of kurukshetra dharmakshetre kurukshetre mam veta vitsava mamakaha pandavasche cheva kim kurvat sanjay ग्लोरिफिकेशन ऑफ द गीता there it says that one should read bhagavad gita very synchronously synchronously with the help of a person who is a devotee of shri krishna and try to understand it without personally motivated interpretations the example of clear understanding is that is there in the bhagavad gita itself in the way the teaching is understood by arjuna who heard the gita directly from the lord if someone is unfortunate enough to understand the bhagavad gita in that line of this disciplic succession without motivated interpretations then he so surpasses all studies of vedic wisdom and all scriptures scriptures of, of the world one will find in the bhagavad gita all that is contained in other scriptures but the reader will also find things which are not to be found elsewhere that is the specific standard of the gita it is the perfect theistic science because it is directly spoken by the supreme personality of godhead lord shri krishna the topic discussed by dhritarashtra and sanjaya as described in the mahabharata from the basic principles for this great philosophy it is understood that this philosophy evolved on the battlefield of kurukshetra which is the sacred place of pilgrimage from the in 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 mortal time of the vedic age it is spoken by the lord when he was present personally on this planet for the guidance of mankind the word dharma kshetra a place where religion ritual are performed is significant because on the battlefield of kurukshetra the supreme personality of godhead was present in the side of arjuna 
Dhritarashtra, the father of Kurus, was highly doubtful about the possibilities of his son ultimate victory. In this doubt, he inquired from the secretary Sanjaya, what did they do? He was confident that both his sons and the sons of the younger brother Pandu were assembled in that field of Kurukshetra for the determined engagement of the war. Still, still his inquiry is significant. He did not want to compromise between the cousins and the brother. And he wanted to be sure that fate of his sons on the battlefield because the battle was arranged to be fought at Kurukshetra, which is mentioned elsewhere in the Vedas as place of worship. Even, the, even for the denizen of heaven, <coughs> denizen of heaven, Dhritarashtra became very fearful about the influence of holy place on the outcome of the battle. He knew <coughs> very well that this would influence Arjuna and the son of Pandu favorably because by nature they were all virtuous. Sanjaya was a student of Vyasa. Before, by the mercy of Vyasa, Sanjaya was able to envision, envision the battlefield of Kurukshetra even while he was in the room of Dhritarashtra and so Dhritarashtra asked him about the situation on the battlefield. Both the Pandavas and the sons of Dhritarashtra belong to the same family, but Dhritarashtra's mind is disclosed herein. He deliberately claimed only his son as Kurus, and he separated the sons of Pandu from the family heritage. One can thus understand the specific position of the trust in his relationship with the nephew and the son of Pandu. As, the, as in Paddy field, the unnecessary plants are taken out, so it is expected from every beginning of these topics that in this religious of Kurukshetra, where, where the father of religion, Sri Krishna, was present, the unwanted plants like Dhritarashtra, San Duryodhana and others would be wiped out and the, and the thoroughly religious persons heeded by the Yudhishthira would be established by the Lord. This is the significance of the word Dharam Kshetre and Kuru Kshetre apart from their historical and Vedic importance. Sanjay Uvacho. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you. You're going to stop here. Thank you. Yes, so everyone understood, right, what Mataji just read. Anybody had any questions from this is this is Loka? Okay. Okay, so it's clear. I mean, it's a story, so I'm not going to give it. There is not a lot of philosophy. Prabhupada is already explaining everything very clearly that why did Dhatrasht ask Moon, my son so, and son of Pandu, why he discriminated? Why did it ask? What did they do? So, because he was not clear, he was not sure that in in Dharma Chetre, the Kuru Chetre, you know, they may change the mind. So that's why he's asking. Now, it's text number two. Who wants to read? After after text number two or three, there is not much of information. We will finish very fast because there is not much text. Okay. <coughs> Okay, if no one, Mataji, you can continue reading. Okay. Dashtva tu pandava nikam yudam druryo dhan stala acharya mupa sangamya raja vachanam bravita. Sanjay said, O king, after looking over the army arranged in the military formation by the sons of Pandu, King Duryodhana were to his teacher and spoke the following words. Purpose. The Drashtra was blind from birth. Unfortunately, he was also perfect of spiritual vision. He knew very well that 
His sons were equally blind in the matter of religion, and he was sure that they could never reach an understanding with the Pandavas, who were all pious since birth. Still, he was doubtful about the influence of the place of pilgrimage, and Sanjaya could understand his motive in asking about the situation on the battlefield. Sanjaya wanted, therefore, <clears throat> to encourage the despondent king and thus assured him that his sons were not going to make any sort of compromise under the influence of holy place. Sanjay therefore informed the king that his son Duryodhana, after seeing the military force of Pandavas, and once went to the commander of chiefs Doronacharya to inform him of the real position. Although Duryodhana is mentioned as the king, he still had to go to commander on the account of seriousness of the situation. He was therefore quite fit to be politician. But Duryodhana, Duryodhana's diplomatic veneer could not describe the fear he felt when he saw the military arrangement of the Pandavas. Paschetam Pandut Putrana Macharya Mahatin Chumam Yudhadrupada Putrena Tavashishena Dimata. <coughs> o oh, my teacher, behold the great army of the sons of Pandu, so extremely arranged by your intelligent disciple, the son of Gurupada. Purpur. Duryodhana, a great diplomat, wanted to point out the defect of Duronacharya, the great Brahma, Brahmana commander of chief. Dronacharya had some political quarrel with King Drupada and father of Draupadi, who was Arjuna's wife. As a result of this quarrel, Drupada performed a great sacrifice by which he received a benediction of having a son who would be able to kill Dronacharya. Dronacharya knew this perfectly well and yet as liberal uh, brahmana as he not hesitate to impart all his military secret when the son of Draupada Drishtaduman was interested to him for military education. Now on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, Drishtaduman took the side of Pandavas and it was he who, he who arranged for their military phalanx. After having learned the art of Dronacharya, Dronacharya pointed out this mistake of mistake of Dronacharya's so that he might be alert and up, uh, up compromising in the fighting. By this, he wanted to point out also that he would not be similarly lenient in battlefield against the Pandavas, who were also Donacharya's affectionate student. Arjuna especially was his most affectionate and brilliant student. Donacharya also wanted that such leniency in the fighting would lead to defeat. Thank you, Mantaji. Um... Hetan Mataji or Nagrani Mataji want to read anyone? Yes, sir. Okay. okay, so first Hetal Mataji and then we go to Nagrani Mataji. Okay, Prabhuji. Atra Sura Mahaswa Mahaswa Asa Bi Bimarjuna Sama Yudi Yudanu Vidataska. Here in this army, as many heroic uh, bowmen equal to fighting to be Bhima and Arjun, great fighter like Yuyudha with uh, Virata and Draupada, Purpat. Even through, even though Dhritra. Dr uh, Drishta Duma 
was not not a not a very important obstacle in the face of dronacharya very good very great power of military art there were many others who were cautious of fever fear they 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 are mentioned in by dronacharya as a great stubbing blocks on the path of victory because each and every one of them was a formidable formidable as bhima and arjuna he knew the strength of bhima and arjuna and thus he compared the others with them hari krishna you can read few more maybe till 8th and then mata ji will read rest three very small uh, i will finish in 10 minute ah uh, prabhu ji can i come back uh, okay. let her read i'll come back in okay two. okay nagrani mata ji can read yes prabhu ji drushta ke tu che kitana aasi rajascha viryavan purajit kunti bojascha महारदाने there are mighty yuddha manyu the the very powerful uttamauja the son of subhadra and the sons of draupadi all these warriors are great chariot chariot fighters asmakam tu visista ye thanni bodadvidochana vidottama nayaka mama sainyasya sanna dantanu bravi vimite but for your information the oh, best of the uh, best of the brahmanas let me tell you about the captains captains who are especially qualified to let my military force bhavan bhimas bhavan bhishmascha karnascha krupascha samitim jayaha asvadhama vikarnascha saumadattistadaivacham there are personalities like you bishma karna krupa aswadhama vikarna and the son of somadatta kal buris 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 rava who are always victorious in battle sarpat duryodhana mentions the exceptional heroes in the battle all of whom are ever victorious vikarna is the brother of duryodhana aswadhama is son of dronacharya and somadatti Our uh, Buri Sarva is the son of the king of the Bahlikas. Karna is the half brother of Arjuna, and he is the he was born of Kunti before her marriage with King Pandu. Krupa Charya's twin sister married Drona Charya. Anye cha bahava sura madhya te chaktachi vita nana srastra praharna ha sarve yutta vishara daham. there are many other heroes who are prepared to lay down their lives for my sake all of them are well equipped with different kinds of weapons and uh, and are all are experienced in military science perfect as far as the others are concerned like jayadratham kritavarma and salya all are determined to lay down their lives for duryodhana's sake in other words it is already concluded that all of them would die in the battle of kurukshetra for joining the party of simple duryodhana duryodhana was of course confident of his victory on account of above mentioned combined strength of his friends aparyaptam tadasmakam balam bhishma abhirakshitam paryaptam tidam etesham balam bhima abhirakshatam our strength is immeasurable and we are perfectly protected by grandfather bhishma whereas the strength of pandavas carefully protected by bhima is limited perfect here in an estimation of comparative strength is made by duryodhana he thinks that the strength of his armed forces is immeasurable being specially 
protected by the most experienced general grandfather bishma on the other hand the forces of pandavas are limited being protected by less experienced general bhima who is like a pig in the presence of bishma duryodhana was always envious of bhima because he knew perfectly well that if he should die at all he would only be killed by bhima but at the same time he was confident of his victory on account of presence of bishma who was a far superior general his conclusion that he would come out of the battle victorious was well ascertained ayaneshu cha sarveshu yada bhagama bhagamavastita bishma meva bi rakshantu bhavanta sarvaye vahi all of you must now give full support to grandfather bishma as you stand at your respective strategic points of entrance into the phalanx of the army purport duryodhana after praising the uh, prowess of bishma further considered that the others might think that they had been considered less important so in his usual diplomatic way he tried to adjust the situation in the above words he emphasized that bishma deva was undoubtedly the greatest hero but he was an old man so everyone must especially think of his protection from all sides he might become engaged in the fight and the enemy might take advantage of his full engagement on one side therefore it was important that the other heroes not leave their strategic positions and allow the enemy of enemy to break phalanx Duryodhana clearly felt that the victory of the Kurus depends on the presence of Bhishma Deva. He was confident of of the full support of Bhishma Deva and Drona Charya in the battle because he well knew that they did not even speak a word when Arjuna's wife Draupadi, in her helpless condition, had appealed to them for justice while she was being forced to appear na- naked in the presence of all the great generals in the assembly. Although the he knew that the two generals had some sort of affection for the pandavas he hoped that these generals would now completely give it up as they had done during the gambling performances hari krishna Pas- mantra ji sorry hari krishna prabhu ji ethil mantra ji i think ready to read last two the 12 and 13 and then we'll we'll discuss little bit and end the session tasya sanjan as सजानयाद्रुद्धपितामहृतवृतवृतवृतवृतवृतवृतवृतवृतवृतवृतवृतवृतवृतवृतवृतवृतवृतवृतवृतवृतवृतवृतवृतवृतवृतवृतवृतव
bhavat after that the kangshel drums bangles trumpets and horns were all suddenly sounded and the combined sound was to simul test thank you manthi yes so that was today's uh, section we we plan to read and with the mercy of propa we finished it um so from this is first 13 shloka you learned couple of things i know we are learning that the battlefield the battlefield was dharma chetra kuru chetra so the dhritarashtra you see first is to shloka he was not sure that if they will fight because you know um, he know that the dharma in the place of dharma chetra the dharma will prevail so even his son duryodhana leader by duryodhana and 99 sons can change the mind they don't want fight so dhritarash don't want that uh, so therefore he's asking you know what did they do and then then it comes then you see the duryodhana goes to dronacharya and says you know oh my guru you know <laughs> you see the army and then he is pointing his fault that just like you have trained drishta dhumna who was the son of drupada drupada was actually enemy of dronacharya they had enmity but when the son of drupada which is drishta dhumna went to dronacharya for training military training dronacharya did not refuse he trained him despite knowing that one day this person same person will kill through uh, dronacharya so duryodhana was finding fault in his own teacher this is the nature of you know uh, atheistic people or demon they will find fault in their own teacher guru they 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 won't trust even that so this is one thing you see then he goes and talks about the army of pandavas and then he says you know bhima is not powerful in front of duryodhana and bhishma and then he tries to praise bhishma that you know you are great and because of your presence all of you are ready to give your lives for me and the question you know propad is saying that if duryodhana was a king supposed to be a king and he should be fighting on his own strength why he is you know politically talking others strength but not talking his own because he knew he doesn't have much to give so he was trying to appease everyone and induce everyone to fight and die for him this is another nature of bad leaders the bad leader will never fight themselves they will not come in the front they will they will induce others so that everyone work for them and they will take benefit nowadays leaders they will never want to give their lives they will take everyone's life and enjoy on their lives right so that's what duryodhana duryodhana is doing and then duryodhana goes on to say even bhishma he doesn't trust because then he says oh bhishma is old so therefore everyone should protect bhishma dev so <laughs> so if the bhishma require protection how can you trust his strength to fight for you right so he he doesn't trust anyone neither he trust dronacharya nor he trust bhishma and he of course doesn't trust himself because he's coward he he knows that you know politically i'm trying to win because before mahabharat every time with the help of sakuni his maternal uncle they cheated you know they treated pandava they cheated every step they cheated cheated during gambling match the cheated during so many situation in mahabharat he'll read so the only thing duryodhana knew well is cheating and diplomacy and that's what he's doing right now he's trying to cheat and induce and find fault in his own guru and then then bhishma dev and then he's he's demoralizing pandavas you know saying they don't have any power you know drishta dumna who was commander in chief for for pandavas army drishta dumna was commander in chief you should remember these point because the questions will comes and you'll remember drishta dumna was the commander in chief for the pandavas and and dronacharya was commander in chief for the trust like the duryodhan side okay 
So he's trying to do that. And now you, after that, you read that there is Kongsel and all blue. So that's uh, all we discussed today. And if any one of you have questions, we'll take it. Otherwise, we'll end the session now. Okay. Hare Krishna. Anju Mataji was silent. She did not read, but next time she has to read the most. Okay, Mataji. Yes. I'm sorry I missed you calling, but next session you have to read. Okay, Professor. Thank you, Mataji. Anybody has any question or anything you want to share or say? Please share. Prabhuji, Drushka Dhona was uh, whose son? Drupad. Drupad. Drupad was father in law of Arjuna. Drupad's daughter was Draupadi. So Draupadi and Drishadamna were brothers. But you see, yeah, so that's why Drupad and Drishadamna were on the side of Pandavas. And Duryodhana and, Duryodhan and, and Dronacharya was on the other side. And Dronacharya was the teacher for everyone. He teach he taught Pandavas, he taught Kauravas, he taught everyone. He was the family teacher for everyone, all the Chatriyas. Okay. I mean he taught even Karana, I mean, he, he refused Karana, I think, training because he was considered by like not Chatriya, born in Chatriya. Yeah. Okay, all right, so we'll end here on time, um, very close to the time. Pancha Kalptaruvasicha, Kripas in the Vecha, Patitanam Pavanevio, Vaishnavio, Namon, Manjai, Shi Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Radha, Sri Mishnavi Gorva. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Hare